Hi everybody, it's Miss Hernandez, and today I wanted to talk to you about an artist named Phil Hansen. Phil Hansen is an artist that uses non-traditional materials to create his artwork. As an art student, he focused on pointillism. Pointillism is artwork created by tiny little dots. These dots need to be perfectly rounded and evenly spaced to create different parts of the artwork. Unfortunately, after many years of practicing pointillism, he developed a shake in his hand that he couldn't control. He couldn't create these perfect little dots anymore and he couldn't space them out correctly because of the shaking in his hand. After about a year, he couldn't even make a straight line anymore. It always came out as a scribble. When he finally went to the doctor, his doctor said that his hand was going to continue to shake and there was nothing that they can do. And the doctor told him to maybe embrace the shake. Phil Hansen took his doctor's advice and actually created larger portraits using these scribbles. For a long time, the shaking in his hand brought him nothing but sadness, but now he sees the shaking of his hand as a new opportunity to create artwork in a new way. This inspired him to think of new ways to create art using materials that artists usually don't use. When creating this Mona Lisa, he thought, what if I have no paint, but I have a whole bunch of burgers? He created this Mona Lisa by using paper and the grease from the hamburgers. What if I have nothing but paper cups and a pencil? Phil Hansen was able to arrange the paper cups and create a large portrait. Now what if I have paint, but I can only make a painting using karate chops? He was able to create a large portrait of Bruce Lee using nothing but karate chops. For our lesson this week, we are going to be making a self-portrait. That means a picture of ourselves using a non-traditional art material. Now for a self-portrait, don't forget to add your eyes, nose, mouth, eyebrows, hair, and your shoulders maybe. If you wanna add other accessories, you may. You also want to think about the emotion that you're going to be adding to your self-portrait. Are you happy, sad, bored, loved, tired? There are so many emotions. Pause here and pick an emotion. Like Phil Hansen, we're going to be creating art in a non-traditional way. In this video, I'll show you about five ways that you can create art using some materials you can find at home. If you have a paintbrush, but you don't have any paint, something that you could do is get some warm water and some instant coffee. Mix it around. Make sure you have enough instant coffee in there to make sure it's a nice brown color. It's not too see-through. And grab that paintbrush and just start painting. Now, when I'm first making a picture of a self-portrait or a picture of myself, I like to make a big U-shape some dots for the eyes and a little line for lashes, a little curve for the nose, some lips. And now I'm working on making some circles around my eyes because I wear glasses. So I wanted to make sure I'm adding accessories that I use all the time and that best represent me. I added my eyebrows and now I'm adding my ears. To create my hair, I start to add some lines near the top, kind of like a mountain or an upside down V. And then a little higher up, I start to add some curve lines to represent my hair. And my hair is a little bit long and wavy. I go back and I start to paint in a little bit more to make my lines a little darker because sometimes the coffee does get a little light when it dries. So you might wanna give it a second layer. Now, what if you don't have a paintbrush, but you have a Q-tip, a cotton ball, and you have paint this time. What we are going to do is actually use the paint, and it can be any paint, I'm using acrylic paint, but it could be any craft paint, and you can use the Q-tip, and you can start creating your self-portrait in this way. 
Now the fun thing about using Q-tips is they're double-sided, so you can use multiple colors. So for this side, I'm using a lot of blue to create that face, the eyes, nose, mouth, eyebrows. And instead of a happy face, I wanted to pick a different emotion, and I did kind of a bored face. Now using that other side of the Q-tip, I'm now dipping into the pink, and I'm just adding different details like the hair. I can switch back and forth between colors however I want, and the cotton ball is fun. I could just stamp and pat that on to create a little cloudy looking texture. Now here's a material that you definitely have to ask before using. I know that I have some old makeup that I don't use anymore, and before throwing it away, I actually thought, wait a minute, I can use this as paint. Please ask before using, but maybe somebody at home might have some old makeup that maybe they don't need anymore and they want to throw it away. Instead of throwing it away, maybe you can use it to create art. Now, since this was a red color, I thought it really reminded me of an angrier, more annoyed emotion. So when I created this portrait, I kind of aimed for more of a little upset looking face. And it's okay if you're upset. That is a normal emotion. And right now I'm adding the neck and some shoulders and I'm going to fill it all in. And here we are. For my next example, I am using whiteout to create a portrait. Whiteout is used to cover up words on a document that might have been a mistake. And unfortunately, my camera decided to stop recording, so I couldn't record the whole process. But here is the final product. It was a little difficult to use, but I had a lot of fun doing it. Now I'm gonna show you how to create art using foil that you can find in the kitchen. What I'm doing right here is I'm using a spoon to smooth out all the wrinkles and I'm making sure I have a smooth surface underneath in order to get all those wrinkles out. Next, I'm getting some napkins and I'm putting it under the foil so that it could give a little bit of give. I use my nail to make a line or if you have a uh, pen or marker, you could use the more rounded side to create these lines too. If you're using a sharp pencil, for example, it's gonna poke a hole in the foil and it's not gonna be very fun when the whole thing rips apart. So using the more rounder edges of a maybe pen or a pencil or a marker, maybe even your finger, is gonna be the better option. Please make sure that you're not drawing on the foil right on the table. You really should have that napkin underneath so that way you can see your lines better. If you do it on the table, you won't be able to see the lines as much. So let's say that you don't have any of these materials to work with, but maybe you have a cardboard box, a cup of water, and a paintbrush. If you apply that water on top of the cardboard, you're gonna notice that the water darkens up the cardboard. To make yourself portrait, you're gonna need to remember you're making eyes, eyebrows, nose, mouth, ears, hair, neck, and shoulders, and whatever else you wanna add. But you gotta work quickly. The water dries up pretty quick and disappears into the cardboard. So if you wanna make all your details, work quickly before it disappears. And if you make a mistake, let your artwork dry and try again. What have we learned today? We learned that we can make a self-portrait using non-traditional art materials, whether it's old makeup, office supplies, using instant coffee, or foil from the kitchen. It doesn't even have to be any of these materials. It could be any material that we usually don't use in art. What you're going to do is snap a picture or make a recording and explain what was that material that you used that we usually don't use in art. For example, if Phil Hansen turned in this Mona Lisa painting, he would say, my non-traditional art material was using hamburger grease on regular piece of paper. Please check out the extra art activities for more ideas. 
and remember to have fun and get creative.